All right, bud. What day is it? Today is day 323. Um, we did a lot of things today, partly in the goal of being having our high voltage working and our charging working. Um, and we started this morning by reworking our wiring diagram. Oh, that's right. So we forgot about that. So we we decided, well, first we wanted to rewrite how we're doing contactors because I think you saw in my last video, because the negative contactor is shared between the drivetrain and the charger on the volt, we were trying to think of all the different ways we could do that, and I didn't get comfortable with any of them. And what we decided to do was, for the actual charger itself, the negative wire is just going to go straight to the negative of the battery, and the positive wire is going to go through the positive contactor that's in the volt. The, the, uh, and I suppose later, if we want to add a contactor for the negative wire of the charger, we have the one that came with our Thunderstruck kit, our VCU. So we could use that one on the negative of that line, but for now, the negative of the line is just going to get hardwired to the negative of the battery. But like Charlie was saying, we redid all this so that we could have a new fuse block. That's what? What does that fuse block represent? <sighs> Sorry, the key, right? Yeah, so this is all the voltage that is key switched. So we've got one relay. So when you turn the key on, one relay, relay number three, that's going to enable the power to this fuse block. And then what we figure is we'll use all these fuses to drive off things that need key switched power. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get another one. And what we'll do is we'll have another one of these for all of the things that need constant on power, like, MCU. like the MCU and a, a few other things. All right, so we did that this morning. We rewired that. What else did we do? What did we do after that, bud? Um, we finished hooking up. So uh, I think in our last video we had the high voltage cables to the inverter, uh, but we didn't have the butt oh, head connectors. Oh, that's right. So yeah, the butt head connectors. Uh, but we got those in, and we hooked that up to our uh, Chevy Volt high voltage connector that plugs in the front of the battery. Yeah, so. we spliced that into this connector which uh, you guys have seen it before it's that one um and so we were able to put it into these like zero gauge or one aught gauge cables and um and it worked out okay i have a feeling that we probably should have went to like one gauge wire instead of zero but uh, it's okay so we did that and we got that wired up what else did we do um, so originally our idea was since the negative contactor is shared by the drivetrain and the uh, charging that we were just going to try and run our negative wire from our charger straight to the negative so it didn't have to go through the negative contactor. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to try and use, so right where the red wire is, we were going to try and put the black wire right next to that and have it go just into this assembly and then just disconnect where it would go to the contactor and run it to that lead up there inside of this thing. But it is a challenge to get those two things apart. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll insert a picture right here in the video that shows the relay. We took this entire relay assembly. It's contactors, but I think the, the Chevy Volt calls it the relay assembly. But this whole thing with all the contactors and all these sensors in it, we took it off. It's actually pretty easy to get off. Um, but once this whole thing is off, what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to use this plug for our charger and just be everything all self-contained, the negative and the positive. But the problem, as we showed in the last video, or one of the last videos, is that the negative side of this is only enabled when the main negative contactor comes on, and we didn't want that. So if we wanted to use this plug, we need to rewire inside of here to cut the wire that's going from this pin and then rewire it to go to here, which would have been really, really easy if we could have got it open. So if you watch the Weber automotive video where he disassembles these things, um, and maybe we can leave a link to it in the description, he tears this whole thing down and he talks about, he gets all this stuff off, but this one, this three pronged port right here, the plugs inside of it to get out of it, you need special terminal release equipment to get the, the wires to come out. Cause we took everything off. Like you'll see in the picture, we had 
I mean, we were so close. If I could have just got those wires to release, we would have been able to take it out and wired it up, and then we would just have a one single plug for a charger. Everything would have been perfect, but I cannot get those things out. So for now, we're just running our charger wire up here to the negative, and we'll see if that changes. Right, bud? Yeah, and I think that's it all for the hardware side of things. We came into our the actual MCU up here, and we started configuring it. Oh, yeah, we did do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, the the this is the MCU, so we we wired into the out five. So of all the five programmable outputs on the Thunderstruck MCU, out five can actually switch. A decent amount of current these other ones can only can only source or sync something like 200 milliamps but i wanted to turn we wanted to turn on our contactor that positive contactor um so what we did is we ran the the that out 5 12 volt is the input whatever power you plug into there it'll feed out throughout five on the configured output so we went into the mcu and um in their serial utility and we configured, let me see if I can show you, I don't know if I can scroll up. Um, yeah, so you can see out five right here is configured with the output function plug-in. What that means is anytime we plug in the EVSE cable, the charge cable, output five is, that's the plug-in function. It's immediately gonna put 12 volts to that out five pin. And sure enough, when we plug it in, we hear that contactor over there on the Chevy Volt click. And we got a charger for the first time today, bud. Mm -hmm. That's right. You wanna try it real quick and we'll show them? Yeah. So the car is off, right? So this would be the case like the car sitting with the key off and um, and you can see the MCU is sleeping. And um, and then the CAN bus data, there's nothing going around. Sorry, I've got that off the screen. And um, so why don't you go ahead and plug in the cable and we'll see if we, MCU should automatically wake and output five should go high. There it goes. I type show. I don't know if you heard in the video, but the contactor on the battery did click. Yep, and you can see... Um, that there, and you can also see in the uh, charger status is no errors. Output voltage is 376.3 right now. Um, that output current is wrong, so I, I think the DBC file that I've been trying to create for this is not quite right yet. Um, but yeah, I think, type show here again, um, yeah, you can see the voltage going up, like, this is the first, this is a big moment for us, the first time we've got everything hooked up, contactors, everything, and we're charging the battery, so, what do you think, bud? I think, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good for a day's work, huh? Yeah. All right, well, until next time, what are we going to work on next? Uh, probably the high voltage. Since we have the lines connected, we just got to do a few things to check, and then we can plug that big high voltage cable in and see if we can get this motor to spin off the oh, actual sure. battery, not these. That's right, so batteries. we'll have to wire up. We want to use the volt contactors and the volt precharge relay and the volt precharge resistor and all that stuff, so we got a little work to get that hooked up. But I think we're awfully close, aren't we? Mm-hmm. All right. Good job, bud.